So you've been called a nice guy and you know that being the nice guy comes with a whole set of traits and hangups that, well, basically don't serve you. And at this point, you might even suspect that you have the nice guy syndrome. You care about others. You care about how they feel. You care about how they think. You've got a lot of good things going for you and yet you can't seem to get a date, build a relationship or have that amazing sex life you've always dreamed about. So how is this possible when you care so much? Why do nice guys finish last? Well, let's take a look at some of the things you might have been doing with women that could be slamming the bedroom door. Hi, I'm Brian with The Fearless Man, and for over a decade, I've been helping men break through the social, emotional, and biological blocks that kill their sex life and leave them lonely. And the nice guy syndrome has got to be one of the top things I see when new men come to Fearless. You probably already know that the nice guy syndrome prevents you from having the great sex, amazing dates, and uh, any high level, real fulfilling success in life that you've dreamed of. You probably also found a little help with how to practically deal with it. I mean, have you ever looked up nice guy on the internet? If so, you'll know that the internet is not so nice to nice guys. They're made out to be boring, easily manipulated, and needy, and sometimes even creepy. So with that said, how can you possibly get over the nice guy syndrome? Well, let's tear this BS image apart of the nice guy. See it from both sides. You see, when I think of nice guys, I think of a lot of my students, the guy that wants a woman to feel safe around him. So he makes it known that he's not a threat. The guy that wants a girl to have a great time. So he always asks what she wants to do first. The guy that jumps at the opportunity to help his crush out when she needs a ride, a friend, or someone to talk with. And it's great to do these things, but if you're not doing it out of choice, if you're doing these things to get validation, to feel safe, to not upset her, then that's where the problem lies. It's nice of you to do these things, but the problem is they're almost always misplaced and you don't even realize it. One misplaced nice guy move gets you a one-way ticket to the friend zone. And once you're there, you're no longer a sexual prospect. In fact, there's nothing sexual about you as a friend at all. In this video, I'm going to show you the three nice guy moves that destroy your position as an interesting and attractive sexual man. But first, take the next second to click the subscribe button. And if you're learning something new, go ahead and like the video too. This is a one second step that guarantees you continued high quality content that helps you live the fearless life you're born to live. Thank you for doing that. Let's get started. Number one, Mr. Indecisive. Imagine this scenario. You landed a date with a girl that you've been interested in for a while. You're nervous, but you're set on making sure she has the best night of her life. You pick her up. She asks you what's for dinner. You tell her it's her choice. You take her to the movie theater. She asks you what movie you want to see. You tell her you pick. After the movie, she asks you what's next. You say, well, what would you like to do? And at the end of the night, she thanks you for a nice date, skips the goodnight kiss, and you never hear from her again. You made sure she got everything she likes, maybe even everything she loves but she didn't show any sexual interest in you. What was it that killed the date? Well, I call it Mr. Indecisive. When you're a nice guy, you think that letting women choose will make her feel empowered, make her feel safe. And it's a safe bet for you because, well, basically she'll get everything that satisfies her. But the logic is backwards. You see, when you defer decision-making to your date, you're subcommunicating a few sex-killing messages. You're telling her that you are incapable of making a decision. And if you can't make a decision, well, then you're not a good leader. And if you're not a good leader, then you can't keep her safe. You're telling her that you're not good with tension. More on that later. It doesn't matter that you have the intention to make her feel safe. Another way to put it is that you have the intention to decrease tension so she feels safe. But deep down inside, that's so you feel safe. You actually make her feel the opposite because what matters is the subconscious message you send. And the subconscious message you send as Mr. Indecisive is, I can't decide. I can't lead. Don't trust me. If you want to beat this, you need to learn how to become Mr. Decisive. The guy that can use his masculine instincts to decide and to execute. She's going to love it when she sees how assertive your decision making is. And it will pay off at dinner, after the movie, and in the bedroom. Number two, the kindness crusader. Do you ever feel sorry for bothering a woman when approaching her? Could it be showing in your subcommunication, in the way you co uh, comment, your vocal tone, your facial expressions? Do you ever do anything to reduce and avoid conflict? Do you feel conflict ruins relationships? 
If you answered yes to any of these things, then you're on a kindness crusade or you're a kindness crusader. Let me explain. All the things I mentioned, and I could list a thousand more, they all have one goal in common, to reduce tension. You see, telling a risky joke, especially a sexual one, creates tension. Reassuring her that you're joking breaks the tension. Approaching a girl creates tension. Apologizing for interrupting her with your energy breaks the tension. And conflict is the ultimate tension builder. Reducing it breaks the tension. Avoiding it entirely creates no tension at all. Why does this kill your chances for a great night in bed with an amazing woman? Because like it or not, tension is the one thing you need to get more sex, better relationships, more money, and more power. The logical thought process is that by reducing tension, you can help the girl feel safe around you. But you couldn't be further from the truth. She wants to know that you can handle tension. That's why women create tension in the first place. And they do this in any number of ways, from teasing you and testing you all the way down to flat out rejecting you. The kindness crusader is your way of breaking tension because it's uncomfortable, because it doesn't feel good. But that is the point of her testing you with tension to see if you can handle it. The man that can gracefully handle tension, or better yet, play with it, have fun with it, passes the test and wins the reward. A solid guy might even start testing her back. And this means he is strong enough to feel uncomfortable and persist in his goals. It means when something dangerous happens, he has the power to keep a level head and deal with it, which makes her feel safe and secure so she can surrender to your masculine. And when she's safe and secure and surrender to your masculine, she'll relax into her feminine, which feels really good to her. She can then flirt, laugh, dance, and be her feminine, vulnerable self, whether it's a conversation or in the bedroom. You see, the kindness crusader is well-meaning, but totally misplaced in the world of seduction. So stop being the kindness crusader and master tension to see what you're really capable of. Number three, the logic trap. Stepping into the logic trap is the number one mistake you can make when talking with beautiful women. Unfortunately for you, it's the curse of the intelligent man. You can see the orderly logic behind the world. You can see the cause and effect of action and everything from business to science to money. When it comes to a woman, you're looking for the same logical order. The problem is it doesn't exist in this space. Sex and seduction are not logical processes that are coded in binary. Instead, they're emotional, flowing, energetic. Just like being an athlete, you have to adjust to the moment. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't a logic behind it. There is, but you've been looking in the wrong place. Let me show you. When you're talking to a woman that turns you on, you want her, right? You want to say the things that make her laugh, the things that turn her on, the things that impress her. You want to say the things that eventually lead to you going back to her place or yours. So you think about what to say. And when she tests you with tension, you think about how to respond to it. You think about whether it's the right thing to say or not, whether it worked. But all that thinking is like quicksand. It sucks you into the logic trap. You end up thinking so much about what to say, how to say it, is she into you, is she not, where to stand, what to say next, that you get trapped in your head. And once you're in your head, you're no longer with her. She knows it. It's why she excuses herself, why she finds a reason to go home, cut the conversation short, or turn you down politely. Think of it this way. Human men have been seducing human women for over 300,000 years. Much of this was before language, before complex tools, before the conscious development of logic. Why would logic help you in seduction now? In the end, the logic trap is where the intelligent men go to masturbate alone. Look, being a nice guy isn't bad. It's not a bad thing. It's not wrong. It's not unattractive in itself. It's actually uh, can be a very extremely attractive thing when done from a place of power and choice, not as a way to reduce tension and be safe. But as a nice guy, you make extremely common mistakes that kill sexual tension, and it's keeping you single. Look, being a nice guy isn't a bad thing at all. It's not wrong, and it's not unattractive in itself. It can actually be an extremely attractive thing when done from a personal place of power and choice, and not as a way to reduce tension. But as a nice guy, you make extremely common mistakes that kill sexual tension, and it's keeping you single. Now, if you want to tackle your inner nice guy and replace him with a naturally attractive man, a masculine man you were born to be, then I want you to do two things. Number one, check out my previous video on how to destroy the nice guy. In that video, which we'll put a link in here somewhere, there's a step-by-step -step process 
on how to uh, destroy the nice guy once and for all. And it's and I go through it in detail. So definitely check that video out. Uh, you don't want to miss it. Number two, get yourself a copy of our flagship book, The Art of Fearless Seduction, sent straight to your door. This book lays out the proven processes that can uh, that you can use to stoke your seductive fire immediately and start attracting beautiful women. The beautiful women you've always dreamed of. Don't let your inner nice guy ruin your sex life. All you need is a bit of myth busting and some step-by-step -step guidance and expert insights into the power of sex, the power of seduction, and the power of subcommunication. It's all in the art of fearless seduction. So go to the link in this video and grab your free book right away. Grab it before they're gone. Until next time, I'm Brian with The Fearless Man. And always remember, only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video.